for me, the hardest part was from the beginning, I had set out to tell a story of, um, I had fallen into the trap that most of us fall into. I was going to tell a story of this, this angel, this perfect woman who I was madly in love with and just thought she was perfect. And I went to Arkansas in 2004 <laughs> to tell that story. And once I got there and started talking to people, I was like, oh my God, she's a really complicated person. I'm not even sure I like her that much. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I could tell this story. She's really complicated. She's like, she's been a, this man's mistress for 10 years. She's basically a home wrecker. <laughs> um, there are people in Arkansas who felt like she's so uneducated. They didn't think she could even write her own autobiography. They feel like she's, she had a ghostwriter and the, you know, the Little Rock Nine weren't all in love with her like I was. <laughs> she had this very complicated legacy and she um, was somewhat compromised um, because of you know what happened in 57. And so the hardest part for me was even deciding what story I would tell. Was I gonna go the regular route and tell the perfect story? Because when I looked at the stories I knew of people like a Rosa Parks, I realized I didn't know a lot of personal information about Rosa Parks. She really is just this perfect icon, kind of trapped in history in that time. And I was trying to replicate the same thing for Daisy. Mm -hmm. But then I realized I needed to get beyond that. And she was, because she was so complicated, she was much more interesting as a hero. And she was somebody who was not born to greatness, but when called, she stepped mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And that made her story that much more compelling. But it, I, I really struggled with that. And I also struggled with even putting myself in the film. I never wanted to be in the film. I, my whole thing is if I wanted to be in the film, I would have dropped more weight. <laughs> I, would have, <laughs> I would have been on a serious diet because TV adds another 10 pounds that I did not need. Um, you look great. <laughs> thank you. Because I look at it and I'm like, oh, God. And I have to live with that image forever. But I didn't want to be in front of the cameras. I always wanted to. So I really struggled for a long time. I was just telling a traditional story. And I, I had planned to get a narrator like Angela Bassett to narrate the film. That's the kind of films I was used to working on, not the films where I put myself in it. And once my editor and I put it together, we realized it was kind of dry and it wasn't as compelling as it should be and that maybe it would be um, something people could really connect to more if I was on a journey and you as the viewer are on this journey with me trying to figure out who she was. So those are the, the hard things. I think for women's studies and any study about the sort of, we always talk about race, class, sex, uh, and I just think this film is, is such a study in race, class, sex in yeah. America. Um, and you know what it really means in people's lives and having uh, been a history major once it's really <laughs> important to me so I, th I thank you and um, I, that's what I wanted was for for my students and for people here to see it and and to use it I think that just a couple of other things because I have about 25 points I'd like to make but just a couple of others that are really important to me one is obviously the role of uh, black women in America in this struggle, which I was one of those white women. Uh, oh, I, was, I was mm -hmm. in North Carolina at Duke University in the early 60s. Mm -hmm. um, and it is the story that you tell of what the black women did that was so important to us, uh, who later became feminists. And, and wow. to see that, to have that line in there and to see that, because I, I have felt for so long that the incredible strength of black women in the civil rights movement is just an untold story. Um, and, you know, even the fact that six of the nine are girls. That's true. You know, and yeah. I mean, you don't even comment on it, but it's there. It's true. You know, it's six true. of the nine are girls. And, you know, yeah. why is it that girls were more um, the ones who did it? You know, who knows? Um, the fact that the, the ways in which um, Daisy Bates, to me, it's really so important for thinking about leadership that you don't show her as a perfect icon um, because leadership is complex mm -hmm. and people become leaders for all kinds of reasons, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I wonder, would we have been so critical of a man who liked the spotlight? <laughs> um, you know, you know what, what, why is it that they were so critical that she liked being on the media and she was yeah. good at it? Yeah. You know, and that was part of the resentment to her. 
and and the imperfection of well obviously the classism of that she huge. wasn't educated herself huge. you know huge yeah. huge mm -hmm. class issues mm -hmm. that she wasn't educated enough to be the representative but i think it 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 shows how difficult it is for women in that moment to be publicly leaders uh, mm -hmm. and and this is kind of a theme that i talk about a lot in my mm -hmm. my work that women are always leading mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's when women become public and take some of the spotlight um, that we see the backlash against them, uh, whether that's in, in the media as with her, least of all that she enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that, that yeah. she actually had some, you know, pleasure in, in mm -hmm. being in that role. So mm -hmm. I think that you've really given us an opportunity to talk about the complexity of leadership When the 101st landed at Little Rock Air Force Base, the reaction in quite Little Rock was just horror that soldiers are in the streets. I think it was just more proof to a lot of white people. My gosh, you failed to keep a black woman under control and look what happens. I think among black people, it enhanced her status. I mean, a lot of people felt like, wow, look what she got done. As I watched history unfold before my eyes, I was frightened, frightened to death. All the weeks of pressure, threats, intimidations, and sleepless nights came down on me. Had I made the right decision? In honestly seeking justice, had I helped my people? Or was this day the result of a vendetta I had made against all white people? I was suddenly a little girl again, sitting on the bank of a mill pond, filled with hatred and pain that no child of eight nor adult of 70 should ever experience. to get those students in, has That is correct. Uh, do you feel it was worth it? I certainly do. I, one expression by one of the girls, the first morning the troops arrived in my home to take them to school. Yeah. Look, she looked out there and she saw these troops and she said, Mrs. Bates, for the first time in my life, I feel truly like an American citizen. Negro students who arrive here at this school daily arrived here again this morning, escorted by seven enlisted men and an officer from the 101st Airborne Division. This is getting to be a morning ritual here at Little Rock Central High School.